Sagittarius, welcome to your December 2017 love reading. It's Raina here. As you can see, I've laid out the cards because I had to start over again, and I got in pretty um, deep into it, but um, I felt like I was kind of all over the map, and I want to really make myself clear. Before I begin, I just want to let you know that I have a special sale for all of my readings through the end of December 2017, 20% off, and even if you're uh, watching this in November. So the coupon code is Jupiter, and it will take off 20% off of the listed price of the readings. And the readings are different prices and different lengths. So um, check me out at rainamoonastrology.com. I have the link below if you're interested. But I wanted to get that out right away because I just put up a set of uh, readings and I think on some of them I didn't mention that because when I was getting um, uh, clients, uh, it wasn't they weren't all taking advantage of it and I had to refund some money to them because I want everyone to be able to get it whether they put in the coupon code or not. But um, anyway, um, so... The other thing I wanted to say is that I got a comment last month from somebody who was single and felt like my reading was not for, I think it was a woman, for her. And I just want you to know that when I was putting out these cards, I was thinking, no wonder I always talk about relationships because a lot of times that's how it comes out when I'm doing these readings. I did experiment with um, doing two separate sets of readings a few months ago, one for singles and one for couples, but it seemed kind of redundant. I had a better uh, reaction or maybe a um, result with doing something on Vimeo where I had a very specific type of advice for people who are looking to get into relationships. So I might do something like that in the future, but I am sorry if you're single and it seems like these are always dealing with relationships. I don't know what to tell you. I try to to see where it fits, but it doesn't always. I will say if you're single and you're if you've met a Libra person, that person may have kind of put a smile on your face after um, experiencing some kind of rejection because in the past position we have a card connected to rejection and this is a card of feeling this can be a card I, I feel that this is for some Sagittarians that you are getting divorced okay um, and this is the mourning period maybe you didn't want to get divorced but you felt forced to because of the other person's behavior, or maybe they just um, up and left. I want to say, um, before I continue, that on December 3rd, there's going to be a full moon in Gemini, which is the opposite sign of Sagittarius. That will be in the seventh house of committed partnership. So that could be a time in early December, or thereabouts, where the divorce decree comes th through, because... Um, full moons can be endings, and we do have the card of litigation or, um, you know, some kind of legal agreement, the, the justice card, and um, it, it says it all, really. So, basically what it's saying is that you are, you feel bad about this situation. You're not happy that you're getting divorced. And you may even take it as some kind of a, an indictment against you. And that's, that's a very important thing to look at if you're taking this personally. If somebody else has decided to leave you for whatever reason, it's important that you don't look at yourself as being not okay as a result of that. And if you felt like you had to divorce someone, likewise, you have to um, forgive yourself for possibly hurting someone else. If you um, 
realized that you weren't in love with someone and that the relationship wasn't what you wanted it to be. I don't think that there's anything wrong with being honest with yourself and taking um, those steps because ultimately it's helping the other person. No one needs to be in a relationship with someone who doesn't love them. And yes, it's messy and it's hurtful in the short term, but it's really um, ultimately for the best when it comes to both parties. And, you know, sometimes people, we mourn losses and, and maybe we don't feel guilty, but we still feel sad. I mean, that's also possible. Now, what is happening right now is represented by the Ten of Pentacles, which indicates that you are financially taken care of. So if you have children, um, they are not going to have any kind of problems because, you know, your lifestyle has changed. So you have to downsize or have, um, or, the, you know, that they feel that sense of financial loss. Either you're doing very well as the result of this situation or your parents step in, family, this is family money also, and helps you out so that there isn't any kind of disruption when it comes to that. And so it's like, or, or maybe even with the divorce agreement, you have um, been able to, to get some sort of money from that. I was just getting distracted because the Ten of Pentacles can be also inheritance. And with the Five of Cups, you could be talking about mourning the loss of someone close to you. So it could be a death that happened. But um, I, I tend not to look at that in because since this is a love reading, I don't see how that would really play into it unless it affected your marriage, for instance. But the higher message is the Six of Cups. And so this is a card of soulmates. This is a card of the one that got away. Um, as a spiritual message, it may be saying to you, even if you're mourning the loss, that really um, the person that you have never really been able to get over is somebody from your past. So I, am, I would not be surprised if this is a lot more common than even I know, because people get married for all kinds of reasons. And when I say get married, I don't necessarily mean have a marriage, a, a, a wedding ring and all that. I'm talking about making a commitment to somebody and um, possibly having children with them and stuff like that. People do that for all kinds of reasons. And sometimes they do so on the rebound. Okay, so it's possible that you were involved with somebody and that relationship did not work out for whatever reason and both of you are could have gotten married to different people and, and really want to be together. I was just reading about Twin Flames and I read so much stuff that I wish I could cite where I, where I read this or even if I'm thinking of two different articles. But I, I seem to recall something where they were talking about how people get separated from their twin flames and then they always feel like they're going to get back together at some point. And I was wondering, like, how do people get separated? Because I do hear sometimes about people who marry different people. But, like, why don't they stay together? Um, and I'm sure there are many different reasons for that. But... It's a very romantic notion. However, in some cases, this may not necessarily be something that you consider a soulmate or a twin flame, but simply your high school sweetheart. Um, maybe you went to different colleges and you just went different directions and you were separated geographically. But you, you promised each other that you were going to remain faithful and and both of you ended up getting married to different people and yet you always had this person in the back of your mind we are having mercury retrograde in december 
And I believe the first um, day of that Mercury retrograde coincides with that full moon in Gemini. So there could be some kind of synchronicity with that where it's like you're, you're getting divorced and you hear from this uh, former partner. What I got when I saw this card there was the idea of making space for something new to come through. And by new, it could be something, someone from the past too. But the point being that if you leave a relationship that is not working for you, that signals to the universe that you're ready for the appropriate relationship to come to you. And so it makes a space for that to even happen. And that is part of that thing. If you want to call it magic, you can. But it's just, to me, it's just common sense that when you let go of one thing, something else is more likely to come in. And it's like making space for something to, to, to be viable in your life. And it puts you in that mood too, because you're no longer connected to that other person. <clears throat> what crosses you is represented by the moon card. Um, if you have been involved with somebody who's a Pisces, this card does connect to that Sagittarius. And, and sometimes Pisces and Sagittarians get together. Um, this person may be someone who is deceiving you and is not, you know, when you deal with this person, they always leave something out. So they kind of mislead you by telling you half-truths. Um, it's possible that this is a person you're getting divorced from and that they are still trying to manipulate you maybe even and doing so with um, deception. But could this be somebody who contacts you in December that's, that's an ex? Not necessarily talking about a soulmate even though, but just somebody who um, you shouldn't be dealing with because they are not truthful. The other thing too about this card is talking about that full moon in Gemini, that that may be challenging for you because if you haven't gotten divorced yet, this may be a time when things come to, the, to light and the uh, Five of Cups may be something in, actually in your future that you find out about and that create, you know, sets off the chain of events that the Justice card and, and the Ten of Pentacles both suggest, because many people do watch these in November, and so the past is actually the future. Now, I want to say something about this, because it's very important. Um, I don't like to put stuff like that out in the universe, negative um, possibilities, because I think that it can make people more receptive to the, that idea of attracting something negative into their reality. Actually, my feeling is that that Five of Cups is something that you are already experiencing, even if it's not the final straw. So if you do find out something about a partner in early December, it's really not... Um, a news flash. You've probably been suffering um, at the hands of this person's behavior for quite a while. And actually, um, so that would actually be the catalyst for, you know, to get you to finally see the light. Because this might be showing that you're in denial about something. And that's why a lot of um, these things may be delayed. The Five of Cups, if you were really um, aware and understanding why a person is the way that they are, you wouldn't be necessarily that broken up about leaving them or them leaving you. 
you would actually feel grateful because you know that it's a bad influence on you. But it's because you probably are holding out hope that the person's going to change that creates that disappointment. And the moon card is saying, stop lying to yourself because you know that it's not happening. It's not, it's not a good fit, but it's just tempting to fantasize about it because maybe uh, there are some good things. Um, what is coming in or what it, the advice is, is the Four of Swords. I think this is advice and it's talking about retreat and really reflection. Okay. The Swords relate to thought, communication, but um, this card is actually anything but that. It's like any communication you're doing is inside of your mind. It's like you're, or maybe it's even like you're trying to stop your thoughts. You're trying to meditate. And, but I think if there's also contemplation um, and recharging your batteries, even on the physical level. But it's interesting that this is the number four, because the number four in numerology deals with foundations. And with thoughts, I mean, what I like about that is getting your thoughts straight so that they work for you instead of against you. So if you think about the number four representing like a ta the legs of a table and how, um, or, or like the sides of a square and how that represents solidity and balance. You can harness your thoughts in a way that creates a very stable life for yourself. And everything begins with thought. Before you have physical manifestation, you have thoughts. So that's how you start to co-create a new reality for yourself. If you've been dealing with a relationship that has gone down the tubes. And the outcome, I like, your knight in shining armor appears. <laughs> I think I put this one time, and maybe I, I'll, I'll, I'll put this because this is kind of corny, but, um, you know, it, it's, um, it's clickbait. It's corny clickbait. Um, the knight in shining armor. The, this is um, a person who could actually be a water sign. So I mentioned Pisces, but the other water signs are Scorpio and Cancer. And um, it doesn't have to be their sun, but their, um, their sun sign doesn't have to be a water sign. Maybe it's their moon or their rising sign or Venus. And it makes them very romantic, but also very caring and also possibly artistic. And so maybe they're going to write you a poem and you're going to swoon because or, or so, they write you a song. Um, there's nothing like somebody writing you a song, writing a song for you and performing it for you. Right. I mean, I'm acting like everyone has had that happen. Um, but it, it's it's a beautiful experience or a poem, and um, that is some something that Sagittarius, being a Sagittarian myself, I I just think it's uh, it's something that we appreciate because we as fire signs are very creative and we appreciate other people who are creative. So this could be somebody who is an artist even, okay, but they definitely are romantic and sensitive, and so. That kind of person may help you heal, may help you to get um, beyond or over whatever has happened in your um, past situation. Okay, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this and have a great December. Bye.